Well, hello there and welcome back to another video. In all of my previous bike buyer's guide videos, I've primarily focused on trail bikes, but maybe that isn't your thing. Maybe your thing is going fast and wearing spandex, and that is perfectly okay. And today I've got you covered with five budget cross-country hardtails under $2,000. Just like all my other lists, all the bikes here are going to feature one by drive trains, boost through axles front and rear, hydraulic disc brakes, and air sprung forks ranging from 80 millimeters of travel to 120 millimeters of travel. And I'm gonna go ahead and save you and myself a bunch of time. No, there are no treks on this list. I've gotten so many comments about trek bikes in the previous videos. I wanted to give trek a chance. I always look at trek for all of these lists but they always have like one glaring issue that all these other bikes don't, and that's why I typically don't recommend them. All three of the Excalibur models still use a 141 open dropout in the back, so that disqualified that bike immediately. If I'm spending over $1,000 on a brand new bike, it better have an axle in the back. So you don't have to ask about the Excalibur. I would not recommend it in comparison to these bikes. So, in no particular order, let's go ahead and do this. The first bike is the Specialized Chisel Comp. Coming in at $1,700, this aluminum hardtail features 100 millimeters of travel from a RockShox Judy Gold Fork, or 80 millimeters if you ride an extra small frame. The frame uses Deluzio Smart Weld technology that moves the hydroformed tube joints away from the areas of the highest stress, making the finished frame's balance of strength rigidity, and weight more pronounced than any alloy frame in history. Yes, I did copy all of that from the Specialized website, but I've left a link right here to another video that explains it really well, so I don't have to try to. Other frame highlights are internal cable routing with dropper post compatibility and a threaded bottom bracket. The drivetrain is Shimano SLX 12-speed with a Dior 10-51 tooth cassette paired to a 32-tooth chainring. Brakes are Shimano Dior two-piston hydraulic disc brakes, and all of this rolls on 25mm internal width wheels paired to specialized fast track 29 by 2.3 inch tires. Geometry is quite progressive in the cross-country world with a 68 degree head tube angle and a 74 degree seat tube angle. Geometry that you would find on a trail bike just a few years ago. And that's a theme you're going to see here on this list as modern cross-country geometry is closing the gap with trail bike geometry, which is pretty cool because I think it will open cross-country bikes to a larger consumer base. Specialized also offers a chisel base coming in at $1,500. This is a nice bike too, but I think the upgrades on the comp are worth the additional $200. Both options are great though, and I think they would both be race-ready out of the box. Next is the Giant XTC SLR 292. Coming in at $1,300, this aluminum hardtail has 100 millimeters of travel from Giant's own in-house fork, the Crest 34 RRL with remote lockout. These forks just came out last October, but I think it is a smart business move for Giant, which will help them lower costs and be more competitive in their pricing. There's not a ton of reviews yet on this fork, but the marketing video they made looks like they know what they're doing. Well, that's obvious. It's marketing. They're not going to tell you if it's bad. One interesting thing to note is this fork uses 34mm stanchions, which is larger than the typical 32 or 30mm stanchions usually found on cross-country forks. The frame is made from Giant's highest grade aluminum, Alux SLR, with so many great buzzwords. Marketing hard at work again. Overdrive head tube, mega drive down tube, and a power core bottom bracket shell. It sounds very exciting, right? This frame also features internal cable routing and dropper post compatibility. Components wise, it has the SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain with an 11 to 50 tooth cassette paired to a 30 tooth front chain ring. Brakes are Shimano MT200 hydraulic brakes rolling on giant branded wheels with 29 by 2.25 Maxxis Recon Race tires. A couple negatives in my opinion are the SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain, the lower end Shimano brakes, and the use of a press fit bottom bracket 
rather than a threaded bottom bracket. None of these are a major deal breaker, especially when you consider the price of $1,300. Not bad, Giant. Geometry is a bit more traditional cross country with a 69.5 degree head tube angle on the small and medium frames and a 70 degree head tube angle on the large and extra large frames. Seat tube angle for all of the frames is 74 degrees. This is a really nice bike at a reasonable price. The steeper cross country geometry leads me to believe that this would be a very quick bike. Next up is the Vitus Rapide VR. It's no surprise that Avitas made this list because they offer such a good value in nearly every bike category. Coming in at $1,400, this aluminum bike also features 100 millimeters of travel from a RockShox Reba RL with remote lockout. The Reba is a step up from the Judy fork that comes on the chisel. The frame features internal cable routing with dropper post compatibility and a threaded bottom bracket. Drivetrain is actually a Shimano Dior 11 speed with an 11 to 51 tooth cassette paired to a 30 tooth front chain ring. I can't find the weight anywhere of the 11 speed cassette, but with one less gear, I'd love to assume it's a bit lighter than the 12 speed drivetrains. Brakes are Shimano Dior two piston hydraulic brakes. Wheels are WTB ST I-25s with Schwalbe racing ray up front and a racing Ralph out back, both 29 by 2.25 inches. Geometry offers a slack by XC standards, head tube angle of 67 degrees with a 73 degree seat tube angle. As always, Vitas provides a really awesome bike at a very hard to beat price. If you're okay with an 11 speed drivetrain instead of a 12 speed, I really think this bike should be somewhere near the top of your search. Next is the Scott Scale 940. Coming in at $1,700, this is the only carbon hardtail on this list, which I really didn't think I would find for under $2,000. It has 100 millimeters of travel from the RockShox Judy Silver TK with remote lockout. TK stands for turnkey damper, while the Vitas and Specialized use the nicer motion control damper. The frame has internal cable routing with dropper post compatibility, but it does use a press fit bottom bracket. Drivetrain is a mixture of SRAM NX and SX Eagle parts, with the shifter and cassette being SX and the rear derailleur being NX. It is a 12 speed 11 to 50 tooth cassette paired with a 32 tooth chain ring. Brakes are the lower spec Shimano MT200s that were also on the Giant. Wheels are Synchros X25 with Schwalbe Rapid Rob 29 by 2.25 inch tires. Geometry is much like the Giant with it being a bit more traditional cross country, 69.5 degree head angle with a 73.6 degree seat tube angle. This bike is great if you want carbon on a budget, but coming in at $1,700, they had to cut costs somewhere and you can kind of see that in the component choices. You could definitely ride this bike straight out of the box and have a great time on it, but I think most people opting for a carbon frame are gonna wanna upgrade to nicer or lighter parts. I've saved the cheapest and my personal favorite bike for last, the BMC Two Stroke AL2. Coming in at $1,200, this aluminum beauty has 100 millimeters of travel from a RockShox Judy TK with remote lockout. The frame has internal cable routing, dropper post compatibility, along with a threaded bottom bracket. Also, it's just a stunning looking bike, especially the carbon frame version. Here's a couple pictures of it, it looks awesome. But the carbon version is slightly over budget for this video. Drivetrain is a 12 speed Shimano Dior with 10 to 51 tooth cassette paired to a 32 tooth front chain ring. Brakes are the Shimano MT 200s as mentioned on a couple of the previous bikes. And it has Shimano hubs paired to XCD 23 rims. Not really sure what those are, but they are wheels. Paired with Vittoria Bartzo 29 by 2.25 inch tan wall tires. Geometry here is pretty radical in the XC world with a 67 degree head tube angle and a 75 degree seat tube angle. Just to give you a little perspective, my YT Jeffsy trail bike from 2017 
had a 67 degree head tube angle. See what I mean about cross country kind of blurring the lines with trail bikes? For the price, I am super impressed with this bike. I think most people would eventually want to upgrade the fork, brakes, and wheels, but to dip your toe into the world of XC, this bike is rad. It's hard to believe that BMC of all companies is offering this nice of a budget cross-country hardtail, and I guess we are truly living in the golden era of mountain biking. And there you have it. Those are five cross-country hardtails that won't require a second mortgage. Any of these bikes would make a great entry-level racer or just be an efficient speed machine on your local trails. And if you are more interested in jumps, drops, or much steeper descending, go ahead and check out my Bike Buyer's Guide playlist where I cover a lot of different bikes and budgets. My previous list, for example, is five hardtails you can get for under $800 that don't suck. Let me know of any cross-country bikes that you think are awesome for under $2,000, and I will happily get in the comments and tell you how you're wrong. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there and talk with you and give you the best advice I can. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay rowdy within reason.